Hello all, in this video we will see about a very common injury to the teeth. Have you experienced school fight in your childhood or any sports injury where uh, martial arts like boxing? What is the common type of tooth injury you could experience or you have seen your friends undergone? It is avulsion that is where the tooth completely pops out as here. So this type of avulsion injury by definition is complete or total displacement of the tooth from the socket. It is also known as X-articulation or tooth luxation. As you could see here, the tooth is completely out of the socket. In such condition, how to ma manage a patient as a dentist? The etiology as we saw could be due to sports injury or fight injuries. The most frequently teeth which undergo um, avulsion are maxillary central incisors. It usually happens in children and young adults. We have to remember that sooner the treatment, the pro prognosis will be better. We should not delay the extra oral dry time of the tooth which has been avulsed. And the classification of avulsed teeth is either by whether the tooth is replanted at the site or the tooth is stored in special storage media. But uh, if it is in a special storage media, we will see what are they. But if it is placed in a special storage media, it could again be classified as whether the extra oral dry time is less than 60 minutes or extra oral dry time is greater than 60 minutes. So how long the tooth has been dry is kept out of the socket. Okay. So what are this? What are these special transport media? They are, they are used to maintain the viability of the torn periodontal ligament. Commonly used, uh, commonly advised solution include Hanks Banked uh, Balanced Salt Solution, HBSS, Viaspan, Propolis. But these are not commonly available. But in regular day-to-day -day life, in practical aspect, you could ask the patient to carry it in a milk container or coconut water or commonly saliva. The saliva could be either stored in the vestibule of the mouth and the tooth could be placed in that or saliva can be spit out in a container and the tooth could be placed in that. So moving on to the management of the avulsed tooth when the extra oral dry time is less than 60 minutes. First we should examine the socket. So administer LA to avoid pain and irrigate the socket with saline after which you are examining the socket. Two IOPAs are needed, one in the mesial and distal direction to rule out any alveolar fracture uh, to visualize the socket in three dimension. And if it is a closed apex tooth, that is after eruption of the tooth, the apex closes within three years. So after three years of the eruption of the tooth, for example, for maxillary central incisors, the patient's age will be mostly greater than nine years when it is a closed apex tooth. In such cases, you have to replant the tooth and you can go for a flexible splint, which for which will be for two weeks at least. Then RCT could be initiated, which will be either uh, from seven to ten days of reimplantation. Calcium hydroxide intracanal medicament is given for 4 weeks followed by obturation in case of closed apex. In open apex teeth, that is the age is usually less than 9 years in case of central incisors, the root is soaked in doxycycline or minocycline. You know, the concentration will be usually 1 mg per 20 ml of saline for 5 minutes. After which the tooth is re-implanted and a 2 weeks flexible spint is provided. No RCT is initiated till the signs of pulpal necrosis is seen. Uh, if um, pulp necrosis is seen, we could go for revascularization and apexification if needed. Now, when the extra oral dry time is greater than 60 minutes, the procedure starts as the same. You should examine the socket first. Administering LA and examining the socket is the first step as usual. If it is a closed apex, you have to remove the necrotic tissue from the root surface first since the extra oral dry time is greater than 60 minutes. Then you have to initiate RCT either prior to re-implantation or within the 7 to 8, 10 days of the re-implantation as situation permits. And flexible spillant is given for 2 weeks initially. As usual, calcium hydroxide is given for 4 weeks as intracanal medicament followed by obturation. But the problem here is the long term prognosis is usually poor. The tooth could either go for ankylosis or root resorption. Similarly, if it is an open apex, you have to remove the necrotic tissue from the root surface. You, you could initiate RCT prior to re-implantation followed by flexible splint for at least 4 weeks. Similarly, long term prognosis is poor here. Ankylosis or root resorption could be experienced.
Now, what if the tooth has been re-implanted at the site? We saw about management of the avulsed tooth, which is kept in the extra oral special storage medium. Now, if a, pa a patient or his pa his or her parent contacts you after an avulsion injury, as a dentist, you should be able to give give these instructions to the parent. So, hold the tooth by the crown. Do not disturb the root segment as a uh, torn pedial ligament is still present there. Gently wash the tooth in the running water. Then ask the patient to rinse mouth and replace the tooth in the socket with gentle pressure and soon after that meet dentist. So when the tooth is replanted re at the side, it could be either a closed apex or open apex tooth as we saw earlier depending on the age. In closed apex teeth, you should check for whether the tooth is in place once the patient meets you. Then clean the side with water, saline or chlorexidine. 0.12% then suture gingiva if it is lacerated especially near the cervical area to hold the tooth in position and go for radiograph to verify the normal position of the tooth and to rule out alveolar fracture and flexible splint for two weeks is the next step. Intracanal corticosteroid medication is also given for two weeks. The purpose is to uh, the purpose of giving corticosteroid medication is to utilize its anti-inflammatory and anti-clastic property. Well, if it is an open apex tooth, similarly check the whether the tooth is in place, check whether the site is clean. You can clean the site with water, saline and chlorexidine, suture gingiva, radiograph to verify the normal position and flexible splint for two weeks. The difference is that you could allow revascularization of the pulp space. If pulp necrosis is seen, you could go for apexification or RCT after attempting a revascularization. If it is a failure, you could definitely go for apexification or root canal treatment. So, the follow-up is the most important step in any management of traumatic uh, teeth. So, after, uh, what is the importance of follow-up? You could decide whether the treatment is a success or a failure only by following up. So, once a week for months, 1, 3, 6 and 12 is recommended and then after which yearly once follow-up is recommended. So, what if the out if outcome is favorable or unfavorable? How could you make it out? So, if it is a favorable outcome, usually the tooth is asymptomatic, not normal mobility and normal percussion. If it is a closed apex tooth, by radiograph you could see there is no evidence of resorption and normal lamina dura. In open apex tooth, the radiographic features will show arrested or continued root formation. Whereas in unfavorable outcome, the tooth could be symptomatic, high pitched percussion is felt, excessive mobility or no mobility if it is an ankylosed tooth. And in closed apex cases, you could see um, radiographic features of infection and ankylosis along the root tips, replacement resorption is the other name for ankylosis. Uh, in open apex also you could see these features along with which crown will appear in an intraocclusal position clinically. So these are the outcomes you could expect in an, um, an uh, avulsed tooth. So this, this is in short about avulsion and its management. See you soon in the next video. Share your views on how the lecture is so that we could improve in teaching you. Thank you.